Shalom, Mishpacha. My name is Yahara Amaris, and it's translated into Strength Given by Yah. Um, today I want to share with you uh, something that the Holy Spirit has revealed to me, and it is what I would consider a profound understanding. So I've prayed on this, I've fasted on this, and I'm just thankful for the understanding. So I want to share it with you um, in hopes that you have edification or that it helps somebody. So it's, I mean, again, this is just what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me. Um, so with that, it's going to be to the point, but I'm going to be getting and sticking into a couple of scriptures just to reveal to you exactly where the Holy Spirit has directed me and the connections that I need to make in order for you to see, okay? So, just to start, um, I've been in the truth since uh, March of 2017. Um, I'm not the best well learned person, but I'm still on my way. The Most High is revealing to me every day, and He knows how I learn, so He brings things to me accordingly so that I can pick up on them. Um, he communicates to me through my dreams and visions, and it's it's been a wonderful journey of understanding, of clarity, of edification. It's been wonderful to experience seeing our uh, fellow brothers and sisters coming into this truth and contributing their knowledge and their understandings and, and being able to show us through their means of learning an edification for all of us because we all learn differently so we all are here for the edification of each other because the way someone explains it might not be the way that another person understands it so that's why things need to be um, regurgitated they need to be refreshed they need to be um, reiterated rehashed because not everybody's going to have the same understanding uh, the way everything's presented by each individual person. So this might be something that you've heard before, um, but hopefully my way of explaining it will make or help, not make, but help somebody to understand it a little bit better, okay? Um, I'm going to be reading from my Bible. <laughs> I'm getting older, so my, uh, my eyes are getting bad, so I need some good print. <laughs> so just bear with me, okay? Um, my notes are everywhere and everything's kind of spread out so I can touch on everything I need to touch on. I'm in the comforts of my home, so I'm comfortable. So I want you to join me in the comforts of my home and be comfortable because I'm not a scholar. This is real life. This is my real life and this is something that um, I take joy in. I'm a single mother and I have a two-year-old, so... And I'm a full-time worker, so I have to get it in wherever I can get it in. But it's 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 here. It's here. So forgive me for the messiness. Um, again, this is raw, unscripted, and this is real life. I don't wear a mask. I don't present myself to be someone that I'm not. So I'm just Yahara. So here we go, okay? So if you are willing to listen or shema, I can paint for you the most beautiful picture of understanding. This requires one to pay attention on purpose. This world that is handed over to the hands of the wicked is meant to keep us distracted and our senses overwhelmed, not allowing us to exercise our discernment, okay? We have to make it a point to listen on purpose with our spiritual ears and come back to our true nature and functionality before the fall. Because we read the word too quickly. We were caused to forget who we were, so we can't negate that there are many other people who have our knowledge. Our knowledge is all spread out. They conspired against us. They picked from us. That's why you have different nations that are simulating us. Or they are actually 
picking up and they have a little bit of this, this nation has a little bit of that, and they put their own input in on our culture or where they pulled it from. They plucked us dry. They plucked us dry. And that's where you got the valley of the dry bones, if you're following me. Each nation got a piece of us leaving us dry bones. And it's nothing but our fault. But we have to repent and come back. But this is understanding here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to seek wisdom. This is how I started. This is how my journey started. Because in order for you to seek wisdom, you have to know who you're seeking. You have to know who you're seeking. And what started my journey is I would hear people saying, you know, her, feminine her, spirit is her, uh, the Holy Spirit is her. And then I would hear some people saying, um... If you call the Holy Spirit a woman, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So I prayed on it and prayed for it and asked the Most High. To, I said, I don't want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. So show me who the Holy Spirit is, who it is. So that's exactly what he showed me. I sought it out and I know who the face of the Holy Spirit is. So... With all assurity. And I'm not above reproof. So definitely. Um, comments and. And actions are. Very welcome. Comments. I'm sorry. <laughs> actions. Comments. And you know. Ideas. And everything. Is, is welcome. Because. We're here all to learn. We're here all to learn. So. Proverbs chapter 8. We're going to start at verse 22. Okay. Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. This is the Holy Spirit speaking now. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I brought forth. I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth Shema, listen, on purpose. I'm going to read that again. Before mountains were settled, before hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. Excuse me. When he set the com a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea to the sea his decree that the waters should not Past his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth when I then I was by him as one brought up with him and I was daily his delight rejoicing always before him rejoicing in the habitable parts of the earth and my delight were with the sons of men this is the Holy Spirit speaking. Okay? The Holy Spirit speaking. Proverbs 9 and 1 through 3. Also wisdom. Wisdom hath built her house. She hath hewn out her seven pillars. She hath killed her beast and hath mingled her wine. She hath also furnished her table. She hath set forth her maidens. She crieth upon the highest places of the city. Wisdom. Wisdom doesn't lie. We're going to see and for surety know this connection, this link. We're going to go to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31, and we're going to start at verse 10. 
Now this is talking about the Proverbs 31 woman. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is above rubies. A virtuous woman. Hmm. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like she is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. So it sounds like she's a pretty hard working woman. Okay? A hard working woman. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengthened her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise, her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth, she layeth her hand to the spindle, to her hand, to, and her hands, I'm sorry, excuse me, and her hands hold the distaff. She is a strong woman, a hard worker. She takes care of her household for her kingdom. That's good. So I'm going to show you correlation. I'm going to be going back and forth between 31 and 8 for a second, okay? So let's go back to 8 again. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. 8, Proverbs 8, chapter, I'm sorry, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 6. Hear, for I will speak excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth. And write to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver. And knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies. For wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that may be desired are not comparable to it. Proverb 31 and 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is above the rubies? Hmm. We're going to also touch on Proverbs 31 where it says, verse 26, she openeth her mouth with wisdom. And her tongue is the law of kindness. Now, another book that we're going to be um, touching on is Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. Because it also talks about the Holy Spirit. So this is one that I'm taking for from Wisdom of Solomon. And this is starting at verse um, chapter 6, verses 17 through 20. Okay? So speaking of wisdom... Because we just finished reading that the woman, she openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. So now we're going to talk about wisdom, how, how we're going to listen to Solomon talk about wisdom. Chapter 6, verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. And the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her law. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption mm -hmm. maketh us near unto Yah. 
Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth the kingdom. That's Solomon talking about wisdom. So, keepeth her law. And then, a woman, when she opens up her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Turn to me if you will. Turn with me if you will. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 9. He that turn away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. Hmm. So, married couples, 1 Peter chapter 3. Verse 7, and excuse me if you will, I must look this up one on my phone because I don't have this one sectioned off, but Peter, we're going to go to First Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 7, likewise ye husbands, Dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers not be hindered, that your prayers not be hindered. We just read in 28 and 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. We just finished reading that the woman, in 26, she opened her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. We just finished reading that the Holy Spirit, Solomon said that the Holy Spirit, in there, and love is the keeping of her law. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. So, these are some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit and the Proverbs 31 woman. Now, I want you to keep the Proverbs 30 woman, 31 woman in mind. And I'm going to take the Holy Spirit now and bring it over here. And I'm going to show you who the Holy Spirit is. Now we just read in Proverbs chapter 8, all these things of the Holy Spirit, characteristics. So I'm going to reiterate for you so I can paint this picture and link this chain. Again, Proverbs chapter 8, verses 22 through 31. Again, sometimes we need to hear and hear and hear in order to understand in order to gain knowledge. So we have to hear wisdom speak. And soon, once you hear wisdom speak, you're going to start to hear another voice come in there and you're going to link this voice with wisdom. Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way. This is wisdom speaking. Before his works of old, I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the depths, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea his decree, and the water should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the fountains of the earth, the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I did with daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of, the, of his earth, and my delight, my delights were with the sons of men. Now turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. And we're going to start at verse 13. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness? 
We're talking about Yah. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Now the Holy Spirit also, these words that stood out to me, told me to write down the definition. Because there, people can get things misconstrued. And I understand. We're all learning. So here are some descent synonyms for darkness. Because we just read, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us unto the kingdom of his dear son. Darkness, misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness. Hang on to that. Wickedness. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness or wickedness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Now we're getting into the, to see the Hamashiach. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. Who is the image of the invisible Elohim, the firstborn of every creature, for by him were all things created. For by him were all things created. That were in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Pause. T turn back with me to Proverbs chapter 8, verse 15 and 16. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. By me, kings reign and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. So we just finished reading that the Hamashiach in Colossians chapter one, just finished saying that for by him all things created. By him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. And then we just finished reading that in Proverbs chapter 8 again, verses 15 and 16, that the Holy Spirit says, By me kings reign. And princes decree justice. Okay. Finishing up. In Colossians. Chapter 1. Excuse me while I run through my notes as well. Make sure I'm on the track and on the right path. Okay. So now. We finish up Colossians. In verse 17. Pick it back up. And he is before all things. He is before all things. And by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that all in all things he might have the preeminence for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in the earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled. In the body of his flesh through death to present to you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. So we just read about the Hamashiach, how he was there in the beginning, how he was there in the beginning. And again, 22 of chapter eight of, eight of Proverbs, Yahuwah, Yahuwah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. The Holy Spirit. So it's clear 
that the Holy Spirit was at the beginning with Yah and that the Hamashiach was at the beginning and he created all things. So, the Holy Spirit is the Hamashiach that was there at the beginning. Let's see. Turn to me if you will, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. That's all I need. Verses 1 through 3. This is the beginning. But before I even touch on that, I want to show you, if I will, if I, if I may, please. I want to show you again this light that people talk about that was created in the beginning. I'm going to read for you. It's two separate lights. So we're going to start at verse 3. And Yah said, Let there be light. And there was light. And Yah said, let there be light. Let me read for you what Solomon said about this light. So, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 25 and 26. For she, this is Solomon again talking about wisdom. For she is the breath of the power of Elohim. And pure and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore can do no defiled thing, or I'm sorry, therefore can do no defiled thing fall, can no defiled thing fall into her. 26, for she is the brightness of the everlasting light, the unspotted mirror of the power of Yah and the image of his goodness. We just read in Colossians that the Hamashiach is the visible image of the invisible Yah. So again, Solomon's talking about how she is the brightness of the everlasting light. The everlasting light. Hmm. And Yah said, let there be light. And there was light. And Yah saw the light, that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. There's that word darkness again. And he said some of the synonyms of what darkness would be or mean. And in other words, it's wickedness. So he separated the good from the wicked. Again, four. And Yah saw that the light was good and Yah divided the light from the darkness. And Yah called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay? John chapter 8, verse 12. John chapter 8, verse 12 was also the Hamashiach himself speaking. And the Hamashiach was speaking. And he said, Then Yahushua, then spake Yahushua again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness or wickedness, but shall have the light of life. Hmm. Sounds like the Hamashiach to me at the beginning. So I had to open up that in order for you to see what I'm going to tell you now. We 
have to understand that the Hamashiach was at the beginning and everything that he created was created for him and by him. That the Hamashiach, we always look at feminine and what is the, the I kept on asking the Holy Spirit, feminine, feminine, feminine. Why does it stand out so much? And why are we always likened to a weaker vessel? And the Holy Spirit told me, dig deep, dig deeper. Feminine, feminine. What's another word for feminine? Then I said, feminine. Masculine. It wasn't a what. It wasn't another word. It didn't mean lesser. And then it clicked in my head. Opposite. Opposite. Feminine, masculine, male, female, light, dark, good, bad, opposites. What's another word for opposite? So we keep on using feminine. Oh, it's a weaker vessel. There's a couple of synonyms. It wasn't that it was feminine. You can call it feminine. But it's nothing but the opposite. That's what it is. We need to get the concept to stop thinking of feminine and thinking of opposite. Or, here's a better word, counterpart. Counterpart. Okay? Here's a couple of synonyms, synonyms for counterpart. Equivalent. Peer. Equal. Parallel. Compliment, a match. Why did Yah build Eve? The helpmate, the Azir Konegda. Here's some synonyms for helpmate. Companion, associate, assistant, helper, supporter, mate, other half. If you have another half, you have an equal. You have something that's equivalent. You have something that's parallel. Same thing as counterpart. Same thing. So, here's the connection that I wanted to make with counterpart. Yah created his visible image, his counterpart, if you will, his right hand. He created his body. Yah doesn't leave the throne. Yah's spirit. He's spirit. He created his visible image, his counterpart. That leads me to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. So now that we have the understanding that Yah created his counterpart. And Yah said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness. After our likeness. A counterpart. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all of the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. We read this too fast, and we need to listen and understand that these are separate parts. So Yah created man in his own image, the Hamashiach. In the image of Yah created he, him, we just finished reading in Colossians that the Hamashiach created all things for him and by him, or were created by him for him. The Hamashiach created Adam. I'll read it again. In the image of Yah, because he was the, vi the visible image of the invisible Elohim. In the image of Yah created he him. He created Adam. 
male and female created he them. This is saying that the Hamashiach created male and female. He separated them. So if you have Adam, who was created whole, and then you have Adam put to sleep, the Hamashiach took from him, from his side, Eve created his counterpart. He has a counterpart, a helpmate, and is there Kanoda. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing. Because when he finds it, he becomes a chad or one again. He finds his counterpart. His counterpart. So, on earth as it is in heaven. And Yah said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. So, we are linking this now back to the Proverbs 31 woman. Why is it that the Proverbs 31 woman has so much of the same characteristics as the Holy Spirit? It's in eclipse. Woman is likened to the Holy Spirit. The counterpart. So if woman is likened to the Holy Spirit, who's the body? In this realm, woman's like into the Holy Spirit. She stays in the kingdom. She makes sure her household is straight. The body is man. The body is Adam. The body is Adam. I can't reiterate that enough. So you have the likeness of Yah and Hamashiach. He created his body or his right hand. He was the spirit. He never leaves it. He never leaves the throne in his kingdom. You have the woman who is the Holy Spirit, the functioning Holy Spirit. And then you have the man that is the body. A man that finds a wife again finds a good thing because he finds his spirit. The body cannot function without the spirit. The Hamashiach cannot function without Yah on earth as it is in heaven. They work together. They are a chad. The woman, Holy Spirit, the man, the body need to function together and become chad. Okay? So, I tell you this. There needs to be functionality. You never see the Hamashiach going against Yah. You never see the body fighting against the spirit. This is the only realm where the body has been fighting against the spirit. And there's no functionality. This world is handed over to the hands of the wicked. And they have done everything to conspire against us. To separate the body from the spirit. And they have done it successfully. But as long as... Our body is fighting against us, the spirit. We will never be a chad. You have men saying, be quiet. You're controlling. They're, they're trying to control the woman. You're trying to control your spirit. Don't you understand that? There's no functionality in that. So now, I'm going to wrap this up with Proverbs chapter 8, verse 32. This is the Holy Spirit speaking. I want you to hear the Holy Spirit. I want you to hear the Holy Spirit of the woman. Because that's who we are. We are likened unto the Holy Spirit in this realm. 32. Weakness, he says, of the man. Now hearken unto me, O ye children. For blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at, my, at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me findeth life and shall obtain favor from Yahuwah. 
but he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. So if woman is likened unto the Holy Spirit, man is fighting against the Spirit. You're not listening. See that you're trying to control and shut the woman up and say that she can't teach. We understand order, but you need to understand you're fighting against your spirit. And we just finished reading. Whosoever findeth me, findeth life, and shall obtain favor of Yahuwah. But if you sinneth against me, he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. And him that hates me, hate death. You love death. I mean, you love death. So, we have got to listen. We're created for a reason. We were built for a reason. Built. For a reason. We have a functionality. We are built to function in a certain matter as the Holy Spirit. You are the body. We complete each other. So that's what the Holy Spirit has revealed to me, that one, the Holy Spirit is likened unto the Proverbs 31 woman, because the Proverbs 31 woman is likened unto the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was here at the beginning. Yah created his physical image, which is the Hamashiach that was here at the beginning. The Hamashiach is the Holy Spirit created at the beginning. Yah said, let us create man in our image and likeness. He created Adam. Or the Hamashiach created Adam. The Hamashiach created Adam and built Eve from Adam. With the same likeness and functionality of their, their selves. Counterpart. Counterpart. We're not functioning properly. We need to come back together. Um, I hope that brought edification to the body. I hope it wasn't too hectic and crazy and everywhere. Um, I welcome comments, reproof, everything. Um, again, we're all just learning. So those are the things that I wanted to bring out. Um, yeah, I thank you for your time and I thank you for listening. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for your time. I really appreciate you listening to me. Shalom.